Hello there and welcome to another Classic Golf Clubs. First of all a quick thank you to all the subscribers as I passed a mini landmark a couple of days ago when I reached 200 subscribers. A small number but it encourages me to keep making more videos. Today we're looking at the Petron Golf Company and their Tour Custom Blades. Uh, very attractive clubs so without further ado let's start the review. Like you'll see I'm not uh, starting with the woods this time, in fact I'm not featuring woods at all because I'm just looking at the irons uh, and the putter today. Um, you can see there uh, some of the clubs in this set, uh, it actually goes from 3 to 10 with a pitching wedge and a sand iron. Uh, the <coughs> make of them, you can see on there it says Tour Custom, Frequency Matched, Pure Blade and they are by Petron. Uh, let's have a look at one of the clubs here. Uh, on the table I've got the 3, this is the 4, 6, 8, 10, pitch and wedge and sand iron. So let's start with the, the 4 iron because this, well all the clubs are in very good condition but a couple of them look like they've barely been played and the 4 and the 10 iron are two of those. And straight away we can see it is a, as the, the name says, it's a very much a, a pure blade. Um, pretty nice profile there. Um, bit of weight at the bottom but not too much and it's got that sort of muscle back style uh, a couple of blue dashes there it's all custom frequency matched attractive ferrule uh, what colour that one is probably red gold at one time red um, on the face we can see that it's a, a frosted face a nice dark grey colour um, very nice chrome finish uh, I presume that these are um, chromed stainless steel and I believe that all Petron clubs were cast although these look like they're more, more likely to be a forged head but uh, I'll, I'll say that they're, they're, they're cast for now. Uh, moving on to the shaft we've got the shaft band here and it's a, a Petron uh, shaft Petron Golf and we've got uh, what does that say Petron custom made Petron, uh, their big selling uh, <coughs> feature was the fact that they custom fitted uh, as many clubs as they could. You could buy them off the shelf, but their main um, selling uh, point was custom fitting. They were one of the first companies to do this and they didn't just do that um, as a, a loft sorry a lie setting. They went further than that with shaft lengths and uh, the whole works really. So very forward thinking company. The grip here we can see is a Shamla grip and that's by uh, Avon made in England. And these are I find some of the best wearing grips um, that there are. Uh, even very old examples are still um, very soft and very playable so these are in very good condition not having seen a lot of play um, but uh, a very good grip anyway. So let's put that to the four iron back. And then we'll have a look at the the 10 wedge. It's, like, it's unusual to get a 10 wedge in a set. The lofts on these are typical for the time. They're about uh, a club and a half stronger than um, what I call the ideal numbers of a 52 degree pitching wedge and then 4 degrees up and down. But we can see here on the wedges uh, we've got the, the 10W there. So it is a wedge even though it's a 10 iron. Uh, it's, it, it says there... Uh, what does it say? Progressive wedge system. So we've got three uh, wedges in effect. The 10, the pitching wedge and the sand iron. And the lofts on these are actually put on the, the, uh, the toe of the club. So we've got 56 degrees on the sand iron. 51 on the pitching wedge, which is about what I like to see. But then we've got the, the 10 wedge in there at 46 degrees. And the other clubs, I'll put the lofts up on these, um, but the other clubs don't have that um, loft number on there. But I will put the lofts up so you can have a look at those. So there we are, a very attractive set of irons. I only just acquired these recently, thanks to a very good friend who spotted them um, on good old eBay. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they perform. Now, I did say I ha I'm not featuring any woods in this video. Um, what I have got though is uh, this club, which you can see it's not the Tour Custom, but if we look at it comparison, in comparison to the 
the Tour Custom Club, we can see that it is pretty much the identical um, casting, if it is a casting. And this one's got TPX TP200. It is again a Petron Club. Uh, the Petron name is in red on this one and the number is slightly smaller. But I can only assume that they used the same um, same head style for this later uh, club. Whether these were available in a full set or not, I don't know. Uh, might have just been a one iron that was available. A slightly different ferrule, um, but the shaft um, pretty much the same. A red writing instead of the black. This is the, the one iron here with a... Uh, Victory green half cord grip. Uh, being half cord, it's not as bad as the usual victory green, still very playable. So, there we go. That means that I've got in the set uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pitching wedge and sand wedge, plus the one iron gives me a total of 11 irons in the bag. So, uh, there's not a lot of room for woods, even if I did want to play them. Right, let's uh, move on to the uh, the putter. I've chatted far long, longer than I intended to. I'll talk about Petron in more detail after we've looked at the putter and uh, just go through the history and some of the clubs that they produced. And here's the putter. As you can see it's a, a simple, um, well I suppose almost a bullseye style uh, brass head, um, double sided putter. And it's by good old Bronte Golf. This is the Bronte BW6. We had various um, versions, BW, uh, and numbered after that. Uh, it's a very nice putter, I find. Good weight to it. Solid um, sort of bullseye style putter. Uh, and the shaft on this one is an Apollo shaft. And the grip is a pistol style grip. Um, Pro Grip and it just says, um, well you can read that there, Pro Putter Grip. So exactly who made it, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, that's the putter. And the sweet spot is about there. So easy to line up just on the uh, end of the neck there. Right, that's the, the clubs. Let's uh, now take a look at Petron, uh, the golf company. Time to take a look at Petron then. Petron was founded by Peter Shanks and Ron Goodchild. The name comes from a contraction of their forenames. They grew to become one of the largest UK companies and were at the forefront of custom fitting. When I started this video, I thought it would be a simple task to research, Petron being a relatively new and large company in the UK golf market, but I soon found that this wasn't to be the case. The first thing to mention is a blog by Peter Shanks himself. In it, Peter talks about how he was previously UK sales direct for Wilson Sporting Goods during the 1960s and early 1970s. Then in 1973, he founded Petron Golf, and I quote from the blog, which I owned successfully for 17 years, during which Petron grew to be the second largest golf club manufacturer in the UK, finally employing 100 staff, including 25 PGA professionals, employed to operate 25 unique testing centres, created by my sales director and myself to precisely fit made-to-measure golf clubs to the posture and swing characteristics of the player. The blog doesn't name Ron Goodchild, but I assume that he's the sales director. I found very little about the early years of the company, and the first written item I found is from Golf Monthly's listing of club models from April 1977, where they list two models by Petron, the Petron 2 and the Impala. Strangely, they then disappear for a while. The equipment listing from Golf World magazine for 1978, 79 and 1980 doesn't even, even include the name Petron. And neither have I been able to find any adverts by them from these early years. Moving on to 1980 and two items crop up. The first is in the May 1980 edition of Swedish golf magazine Svensk Golf and is an advert for the new Petron 2 peripheral weighting model, which is also the subject of a short article in Golf World's Trade Talk section from August 1980. We'll look at this club in a little more detail later on. In 1981, Petron have a full entry in Golf World's equipment listing for April of that year. This features four models, and from 1981, Petron appear in the equipment listing each year with a full lineup of clubs. 
I wonder if this is in any way connected to another comment in Peter Shanks's blog. In it, he says, and again I quote, In 1980, I founded Pro Saturn, a Taiwan based golf club manufacturing business set up to supply famous American club manufacturers with heads. Taiwan was my introduction to Asia, and as Pro Saturn evolved, it grew to employ 60 staff, exporting millions of golf heads to the States during my 10 years' involvement. Note the date of 1980. Could this new access to a cheap and ready supply of components have led to the rapidly increasing profile of Petron? In any event, from 1981 Petron's growth accelerated and adverts from them appeared regularly in golf magazines and such. The only information I've found about Ron Goodchild was that a Ron Goodchild was one of two directors of Baron Golf of East Kilbride. See the theme in the Baron name? where the BA part came from, though I don't know. As mentioned, Petron's USP was the fitting of clubs. They used a host of aids for this, including computer technology. Exactly what this comprised, though, I don't know. Peter Shank seems to have sold the company around 1990, but the Petron name continued into the 21st century. A quick look now at some of the irons that Petron made during their brief history. The dates I'm quoting are the earliest I've found a record for. The release date may actually be earlier uh, than I'm quoting, but that's the best I've got so far. We'll start with the Petron II of 1977, followed by the Petron Impala, also from 1977, and probably their best-selling club and the one that most people remember when Petron is mentioned. From 1980, the Petron 2 peripheral weighting model and the customiser version, as shown in the advert earlier, this allowed the golfer to adjust the swing rate of the club by adding or removing brass and nylon weights to a port in the toe of the club. The weight location could also be moved by changing the order. From 1981 comes the ferret with a V-sole. 1982 sees the excitingly named Predator model. And if that wasn't scary enough, a year later came the Super Predator Plus. 1984 brought us the tournament model of 431. And a year later, the lightweight version at a period when lightweight clubs were the Vogue. 1985 saw the Petron 2 Mark IV. The adjustable weight model seems to have been a bit of a miss. Hot on the heels of the Mark IV came the Petron 2 Mark V, another lightweight version. 1986 brought us the GS Power Guidance System model, and in 1987 came the club featured in this video, the Tour Custom. The Impala Mark III Radius Sole model appeared in 1988, as did the Petron HI, one of the last models before Peter Shanks left the company. Petron acquired Boss Golf and sold the Petron Boss Delta, and the ladies Petron Boss Vixen. I'd guess that the Petron TPX also appeared around the end of the 1980s. After 1990, I think the, the company was in new hands, but this period is beyond what I'd call the classic era anyway. As an example of the club sold, here's the Petron TPX made to measure, and the Petron Skyline 2. Enough said, I think. As usual, I've prattled away longer than I intended to. So it's time to look at the lofts on the clubs and then get out onto the course. Luckily, the course video is quite short this time, as you'll see. The weather was very windy again, so I've had to turn the sound right down and add a commentary after the uh, holes were played. The first hole I'm playing is the second on the course, a par three, and I'm hitting the seven iron. Not a great swing and it was a pretty weak shot into the front right hand bunker. As you can see, uh, pretty wet and I'm having to use a rake to fish the ball out and do my best to play onto the green. I was quite pleased with that result uh, from such a iffy lie. Got to about 
just over 12 feet I'd say left me with this put it's just slid by but a pretty easy tap in for a bogey on to the next thing I do have my woods in my bag but I know people would much sooner see me making a fool of myself with the one iron so I used that for the tee shot on this par 5 another not great contact and this went about 160 yards pretty disappointing really and it left me here in the rough and I took a 6 iron this time I made a much better contact and hit it 172 yards and that left me a very similar distance to the front flag and I hit the same club the line was not too bad but on the edge of the bunker and when I got down there I found that my ball was actually in the bunker I didn't bother um, moving it the lie wasn't great and it wasn't going to be any better if I dropped it again so playing it where it was and again a pretty good result from such a horrible bunker left me just over 20 feet I'd say this time not a bad effort and again it should be a comfortable bogey on to the next a par 4 and again I'm hitting the one iron but this time the shot was even worse than the last one it was a low uh, push into the right hand rough I looked for the ball but I couldn't find it and I was being pushed from behind so I didn't bother uh, completing the hole in fact I didn't play any more holes at all uh, the course was too busy um, which was a shame really because I did hit a few decent one irons later in the round including one of 190 yards straight into the wind and another of just over 220 uh, where we, I was sheltered by some trees from the wind summary of the holes played then two over par from two bogeys I didn't hit any fairways didn't hit any greens in reg and I two putted both greens there's not a lot you can say really well, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time.